Okay, welcome back to creating our modern looking WPF application. Uh, if you've been following this series, I apologize if it's been all over the place for you. Um, it hasn't really been professionally organized, but hopefully, nonetheless, you still learned something. And if this is the first one that you've seen, feel free to go back at the very beginning of the playlist and follow along if you're interested. And really, what we've been doing is using myapps.metro. It's a library for WPF to make apps look a little bit better than just styling on your own. If you're like me, uh, you may suck at styling, and that's okay. They have libraries out there that do that for you, and that's what we're using. But more importantly today, we're not going to talk about styling. We're actually adding some functionality to this app where we're going to save our budgets to our SQLite database that we created in the last video. So you'll obviously need to have this uh, budgets table and SQLite database created, or it's not going to save anywhere, right? And that's really all we're going to focus on today is just saving the budget. So if you remember, let's go back to the app and let's start it up just in case you forgot. This is what we're working with so far. So if we hit add and we add some data, it validates it now, but it still doesn't save it to our database, which is what we want. So when the time comes, we can add also functionality down the road to click on the budget that you want to edit or add items to and, uh, those budgets will be saved in the database. So yeah, once you create the budget, it'll validate it. We already implemented all that. And then we're gonna take it a step further and save it to the database table budgets. So let's do that. Uh, in the last video, I created a folder in our project and I never used it, but it's called data. And here I'm going to add a class and this is gonna be a static class that we're going to use to add budgets to our database. So I'm gonna call this class budget data. And then let me zoom in a little bit. We're going to make this a public class or a public static class because we don't want to create a budget data object and then have to use it. We just want to call it on the fly. That's why I'm making it static. And then let's add a public static uh, void where we're going to add budget to D. You can think of a better name maybe, but <laughs> the, the method here is pretty explicit. And we're going to pass in a budget, not budget data, budget, and call it budget. And we'll probably have to bring in some kind of namespace in order to recognize uh, the budget. And here we go, myapps.models. So let's bring that in. And now it knows what budget is. And let's go ahead and add to this method. Pretty easy. Now that we have EF core, that's what we've used to implement this data or create the database. And that's what we're going to use to make all of our database calls. And that's the beauty with EF core. Once you set up entity framework and you have it working, it's pretty much all downhill from there. Setting it up is probably the hardest part. So here we're going to say using var DB is going to be equal to a new budget context. So if you remember the budget context was in the models here, and that's just going to point to where is this data source? And here we can say db dot add the budget that we pass through. And then db dot save changes. And that's it. Those are the only two things we need to do. Obviously by how the name uh, entails, this is adding the budget and then we're saving the change to the database. We're committing the change. You might have heard that used uh, before, but same thing. Um, that's what we're gonna do. And now we have to call this and pass along the budget so something gets saved. And I think where I want to do that is back in the code behind for the XAML. So the main window.xaml will go to the CS of that. And right before we show success that the budget you know, has been created, has been saved, it's gone through all the validation, everything. We want to go ahead and save that to the database. So let's call the budget data class. And we'll probably have to bring in a namespace for that. So I'll hover over it and using labs.data and then dot add budget to database and then just pass in budget. And that's how easy it is. So it's still adding to our list of budgets that we created earlier, and it's using that list to show in the list view um, the budgets, which is fine. That's okay. 
soon we're going to have this list view actually pull in from the database. So instead of you know adding to the budgets, we're going to have a different method that's going to populate that list view. But for now, this is going to work. So let's go ahead and add a budget and make sure it saves to the database. So I'm going to put uh, from the first to the fifth, and then 1200 is going to be the total budget. Let's create it. Took a second, it says successfully added budget. And if we go to look at database, I'm using DB browser for SQLite and we'll browse data and go to budgets table. And here we go. We have the two dates. It gave it an automatic ID because this is auto incremented. I'll show you that here in a second, how I know that. Um, but here's the date that we entered the first and the fifth and 1200 was the budget amount. So perfect works as expected. And notice how we didn't have to add ID that kind of did it on its own. And that's another nice thing about EF core. If it sees in your model that you have a property named ID, it goes ahead and it adds some constraints to this. Uh, for example, it makes it a primary key and then it also adds auto increment. So we don't have to create our own ID every time that we pass one in. It kind of does that for us and it does it in an auto incremental fashion. So we'll go one here and the next one it'll enter will be two and then so on and so forth. Awesome, so now we're saving the budgets. I think the next thing I wanna do is right when the app is started, I want to populate this budgets list because if we start the app, even though I have that one saved, uh, notice how it doesn't show here because it doesn't currently go out to the database, get those budgets and populate this list view. It doesn't really know anything about them. So I think that'll be what we do in the next video. There's also some tweaking I want to do with the current UI so far. For example, uh, when we hit the plus, let's say I accidentally hit it and I don't want to enter a budget. I want to maybe turn this to a minus so I can hit that and then this will go back and disappear. And then once all that's said and done, I can select a budget. We can update down here the monthly budget total for the budget that I select. And then we can also add uh, budget items. So if I make an expense, I can add that to this budget. And then the total budget will go down, uh, the available budget amount, I guess. And yeah, we got a lot more things to do. Um, but hopefully you've been enjoying. Hopefully you've been uh, following along. The code will be down below on my GitHub repo if you want to go check that out. And thanks for watching.